Toon Turf's release date is apparently coming soon, and I'm honestly so excited to see the pilot and get a chance to see what's in store for the series. However, over the last few months, I've slowly but surely driven myself to the point of insanity trying to figure out what's going on. Okay, no big deal, we can figure this out. Riggy and Lucky are connected to a prophecy that is tied in with the Red Rabbit as well as the Shadow, or... Or is it two shadows? Or is it a shadow that can take the form of multiple shadows? And how do the monsters work into this? What even is the prophecy? I mean, who knows about it? Is it the residents? The police? The government? Are they all in on it? What do they know? Why are there so many secrets? And how does this link back to a flipping toilet? There is no doubt that this series has a lot of secrets that will hopefully be uncovered as the series progresses. But you guys know how much I like lore, and I'm pretty adamant that we have the tools to work out parts of what's going on and what's going to happen next. And today, I want to talk about one of the most secretive characters in the series, Lucky. But before we do that, please do subscribe, it's free and you can always unsubscribe later. Subscribing is the best way to help out my channel, as it can notify you whenever I post. It truly means the world to me when you guys support this channel. So if you could please check to see if you're subscribed, that would be brilliant. Thank you, and back to the video. So let's start with who is Lucky? Well, Lucky is an actor, and no doubt a famous one, with his face on everything from t-shirts to soup to money to the literal sign for the town. But how does such a celebrity gain this role? Surely it makes sense for Lucky to have approached the town for this branding opportunity. To have his merchandise on the whole town seems to be a great deal for him. But I'm willing to bet against that. I bet that it was L.E. Funt that approached Lucky with this deal. And I think that's because Toonville was desperate. Think about it, what does Toonville have? Crime seems to be a big issue and according to these documents, prison systems don't seem to work well or are heavily influenced by the people who should be put in the prisons in the first place. And depending on where it lands in the timeline, they've managed to allow shops to operate where they are literally selling poison. Let's face it, the town is a wreck, and that's even before we factor in the idea of the prophecy, which we'll get to later. It would make sense why no one would want to live there, turning to places like Rhinonopolis or even Blueberg to live instead. This means that the town wasn't profiting, and in turn, neither were the people in charge. So what did they do to make people want to live there? One word rebranding. Toonville had one saving grace, and that was Lucky Luckington. It's because he lived there. He's a celebrity, a well-known figure in the public eye, and he lived in Toonville. He was the only good thing about that town. But Lucky isn't just going to go put his face on a bad town, that might ruin his image. So to negotiate, Toonville's government decided to allow Lucky to run his own operations, things that wouldn't be considered legal by any other means, and allow him power over the town where he can do pretty much anything he wants. Lucky accepts the deal and so the town begins rebranding, turning it from the worst town to live in to the home of the great Lucky Luckington. And it works! The town is beginning to get more residents who want to live next to their favourite celebrity. It works so well that they begin to put Lucky in more and more things, selling Lucky branded items to everyone with the slogan, everyone loves Lucky. More use of his image means the more reliant they became on him to keep the town alive. So Lucky was able to take advantage of this and negotiate more power over the town. And from looking over the documents, we see how much power Lucky has. Documents reporting him are instantly changed to media propaganda to display him as the perfect person. Toonville's higher-ups are willing to sweep under the rug anything that would make us question whether Lucky is really a good person. And we've seen how far they are willing to take it. Take, for example, what happened at the factory. A mysterious fire breaks out at Lucky's plushie factory. One that, once burnt down, claimed someone's life as well as injuring two others. Something that big should be investigated at all angles. But when they get to Lucky, asking him where the tapes were so they can watch it back and see exactly what happened, Lucky stated that he won't give them up for personal reasons. 
Are you kidding me? They don't even question it. We can assume that the reason Lucky doesn't want to give up the tapes is because of the drug operation happening inside, one that he fully knows about because he has ties to the Toonville Mafia. But him saying that he doesn't want to give it up because of personal reasons just makes him sound way more suspicious. Lucky then realised his mistake, knowing that the dismissal would raise more questions, so he retracted his statement and said that the tapes were burnt in the fire. But what I don't understand is why don't the police ask more questions about it? I mean, the man clearly states that he won't give you crucial evidence into figuring out this case and now conveniently he doesn't have access to it anymore. It's shady to say the least, but the police don't question it. And that could either be because of Lucky's charisma and how everyone loves Lucky, or that they were more focused on a different subject since one of the police officers had spotted a mysterious pair of bunny ears fleeing the scene. Now, this could just be a theory about how this small town was able to exploit the fame of one of its residents to gain profit, and then give that resident unrestricted power over the entire town itself, permitting crime and illegal business practices to go ahead. But things change when you take into account the prophecy. We know that Lucky is involved with the prophecy, and I'm pretty sure that Toonville's higher-ups know about it too. Just take a look at this file. It's a report from 2020, talking about someone who had the dream and won't stop until everyone worships him. We're assuming that they're talking about Lucky here given that it's Lucky's file, but see how it's been redacted. Someone higher up saw this document and decided to replace it. Clearly, they knew that this was condemning information, and if we're right about the prophecy being tied to the dream, then in turn, it's likely that the people in charge knew about the prophecy. They just didn't care, or they didn't think they needed to be public information, and that was likely because of Lucky's role in the prophecy, or the fact it happened in Toonville, and they don't want that smear on their reputation. Look, admittingly, we don't know much about the prophecy, but what we do know is that it involves purple fire, monsters, and multiple character deaths. It makes sense why they wouldn't want this as public information, trying to fix it or prevent it before it can damage the town's reputation, and also Lucky's reputation, which might be why he decides to keep it under wraps but not for long. You see, I don't think that Lucky is gonna remain the villain. I actually think that he can be redeemed by the end of it. Oh, okay, so what we've seen of him recently, it doesn't look too promising. I mean, he's a liar, he's involved with the mafia, he's driven by greed, he's an actor. I mean, take one look at the thumbnail and we can already write him off as pure evil, right? Well, it's not as simple as that. Riggy himself is not your typical protagonist. He's a morally grey character that tries to do the right thing, but ultimately fails at times. And that's the same for a lot of the characters. It's what makes them human. Or... Um... I don't know, whatever he is. I think we're on the right track, and with this text that's seen in Dano's Discord, I think we can assume that this is relating to the prophecy. Red Rabbit? I only saw him once. It was because of him that I found out the truth about our world. It was because of him that I became me. And now I can share this with you. I can explain the truth of what you've done, what you are, and why you need to stop. I've made a mistake. I've had your nightmare too. I saw the purple flame. I did my job to fix it. Now you see the flames? Why do you think that is? Bad guy? Maybe once, but not now. I've fixed my mistakes. If anything, you're the villain of this story now. From what I gathered from that, I think it's suggesting that when Lucky learnt of the prophecy, likely through the Red Rabbit, he realised the danger that Toonville was in, and he's trying to do his part for the prophecy, but while everyone involved is willing to help, Riggy doesn't. He insists that there's another way, that he just needs time to figure it out, but Lucky isn't going to have it and he doesn't want to risk Riggy messing it up, so he takes matters into his own hands, ordering the penguins to steal Riggy's other kidney in hopes that it would help fulfil the prophecy. 
This is going to be interesting to see, since Lucky is a character that mirrors Riggy's worst traits. He's an egotistical, greedy celebrity. No doubt Riggy was using these traits as a reason to dislike him. In fact, I bet that Riggy is going to use this to justify to himself that he is the good guy, because he rivals Lucky, aka the bad guy. But then when Lucky is the one seemingly doing the right thing in helping fulfill the prophecy, well then, what does that make Riggy? Even Lucky has an answer to this, saying that Riggy is the villain in the story now. And Riggy's scared. He's scared that Lucky is absolutely right. But what do you guys think? Do you think we're on to something here? Shout out to the members, thank you guys for sticking with the channel throughout this. I hope you guys enjoy these videos as your support means that I can continue creating this content. And hey, if you guys want a place to discuss theories, talk to others, and get updated on the latest stuff in this channel, my Discord is open. The link is in the description of this video, or on my channel page. Anyway guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!